Okay, I'd like to talk about uh, Gaussian PP today. Ga uh, Gaussian belief propagation. This is a belief propagation. Um, so this is like, uh, a, this is a technique to compute the marginal probability uh, of a number of Johnny Gaussian random variables. So in, inside a graphical model. So um, I, I actually, um, this would be like kind of assuming everything is pairwise Gaussian. So we have, let's like, say, uh, know that it's like, I, I can use a factor no kind of representation first. Let's say I have like, this is an example of a Markov chain, let's say, oops. So all these circles are variables, basically. And uh, let's say I, I maybe just uh, draw like this. Uh, so I have like x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x8. These variables are kind of, um, this each of these factor nodes, like this square here, is like kind of describing the correlation between these nodes that are connecting to these factor nodes. So, and uh, the idea is that, like, okay, once I draw these factor graphs here, um, I can define the drawn probability, and, uh, okay, let, let me call this like FA, FB, FC, FD, uh, and have e here, and as I said, because I, this factor nodes is like describing the uh, joint probability um, of the node connecting to this uh, factor node. So therefore, like it only have argument here. Like let's say F A only have argument x one and x two, and F B here only have argument x two and x three, and so on. Um, when I say it's joint probability, it's a little bit uh, loose in the sense that, like, uh, actually the joint probability, we only care about the joint probability here. The joint probability in this example, like x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, is equal to uh, fa x1, x2 multiplied by fb x2, x3 multiply SC, X3, X4, multiply by FD, X3, X5, this is V here, multiply by FE, X5, X6. So, and, and this is like, know that like these guys are not exactly drawn probability because the, this is not like equal to PX1, X2, let's say. At least not all of this is equal to that because then if you multiply all of them together it should then be equal to this guy here. But uh, we just assume that we can factorize into something like that. So for example you can think of like I, I have like this is like um, I pick F A is X1, X2. I can pick F B as like uh, P X V given X2. Then these two multiply together we have P X1, P X2, P X3. Uh, I can have this FC is like PX4 given X3 and FD is like PX5 given X3 and this is PX6 uh, given X5 then I multiply all this function together into that I will have this jump probability here um, so the point of or like the goal of like doing belief propagation is like I may know some of these probability, or I may, I may observe some of the variables here. So I want to find the marginal probability. I want to find, uh, if I assume things are discrete, then as it might be, I want to marginalize everything besides x6. So I have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. I have this joint probability I'm trying to marginalize to x6. This will give me just px6 back. Uh, the problem is that if I do it naively, uh, 
this will be not very efficient. Um, but taking that I have this graphical structure, I can have this sum. So let's say f a x one x two. I have this f b x two x three, f c x three x four, f d x three x five, f e x five x six. I I can do the sum because you see that like for example if I sum over um, x five first. All this do, does not depend on x5, right? So maybe I have x1, x2, x3, x4. I have some of x5 as well, like this is kind of like I just pull one of the summation out from this uh, whole thing here. So I this is the sort of depend on x5, so I can move this summation actually into here. So if I, I if I do that, I just white like this some x5 here I I here you see that like what's the let, let's say like everything uh, is binary okay let, let's say or each of the variables can take uh, two values so inherently doing this sum we will need 2 to the 5 so many steps right and for each of the 6 because I have two values to compute the whole thing I have 2 to the 6 right 32 operation here in the sum um, but here like, if I, I do like for example just f5 put it to here so computing this part here I will need only 2 to the um, um, 3 and then uh, is that right? let's see x5 Um yes this this I, I need to do three operations to compute all this I think. Uh, all I, um and, and then like for the rest let's see if I um yes and then I given this guy here, okay. This is to the three let's say let let's say I, I just done with that. Like I, I don't I, of course I can push further but I, let's see if I don't push further I need two to the three operation to f compute this, and then for the rest I need two to the fifth operation basically. So therefore, like already I have a gain. So you see, like this actually I have originally only sixty four operations here. Here only leave thirty two plus uh, eight operations, and of course, as I said, I can um, go further for that. So maybe like I have stand next step. I sum over. Uh, I have submission of uh, x4 I can go all the way into here right? some of x4 here and for this compute this guy like for each of the uh, x3 and x6 here I, I have like two to three operations and then for this guy here I will need uh, let's see this is like a after this is a, a function probability somehow like maybe I say co and co probability it's not actually a probability but this is like having um, so this is like confusing me this is V here uh, this will be like uh, after the sum here I have x3 and x6 right yes and now if I do sum of x4 I have V web as V like uh, I, I have uh, for each of these x3 x6 I have two of two of uh, yeah I, I will have like again like this operation here will be two to uh, will be eight eight uh, totally eight uh, late eight operations here um, because I um, some of x4 are of of course I have two of them like for uh, basically it's so just two different values right but then I, I have uh, I need to consider for each of the x3 and x6 here so therefore like that's four of them so multiplied by two I will have two to three or like eight of them so I can go further like for example like x3 uh, uh, 
Yeah, actually, this this I'm uh, probably silly to some of x four first. Um, I I should some of x three first maybe. Yeah, maybe it doesn't matter. But anyway, so but you see my points actually. Um, if I have x six, then I should some of x five first. Actually, I, I think it's okay either way. Then if I sum then I sum over x four and sum x x three yeah. Sum over x three, let's say, my x three here will be gone here. So if I here I sum over x three here, for this step, the whole thing like after at this point, this is a uh, I call and call like after this summation is a a function of like x three and x six. So after this one summation here, okay, this is again like a some function of like of x3 and x6 because x4 is somehow then I have this uh, x2, x3, x6 the operation again I need to the free operation here so and this uh, after this sum here I have the this is a probability of or like something function of x2 and x6 now then I have a final sum of x2, x1, actually I can do it all together because I cannot uh, actually I can do x1 first I sum over x1 first for this guy myself that's only have two the two operation that I can do it to the uh, what I mean is I actually I can write like this sum over x1 so now this thing sum over x1 this is a function of x2 somehow and some of us x1 here like I will need like uh, for operation because I for the sum here I need two operations but I need to consider both uh, uh, x2 equal to 1 and x2 equal to another value so there will be like four operation here or the like 2 to 2 and afterward it says kind of x2 here right? and this guy multiplied by this whole thing here at this form here after this sum here is x2 x6 then uh, sum of x2 again the whole thing I will need for this sum I will need uh, to the two operation so if you see what I have now if I, I do hold, hold of this uh, I have I need eight operation plus this eight plus this eight plus this eight plus two plus four plus four plus four plus four so um I I will need let's see yeah. so this is uh eight times four five, so I need thirty two so I cut the number of operation from sixty four like, to thirty two like uh, by half. And basically, I leverage the graphical zero. This is a long as this el elimination algorithm. Um, okay, I I assume you know this. Actually, it's kind of like a review of what's going on. But I I really want to talk more about Gaussian BP. No, I, I may make another video like just talk about BP itself. Uh, okay, so then I for for Gaussian BP, so I will have the joint distribution this F A F B like something like um the um uh, the cause the correlation here will be a basic have simple form like this x1 x2 will be something something like proportional to exponential one half uh, x1 transpose sigma uh, use lambda maybe I use la lambda 1 to x2 have forms like that and uh, Okay, and I might have to be careful like this. Like, if I multiply all of this, I won't multiply into a a um, a joint probability. Typically, what's going on will have like uh, additional uh, factor node just to specify uh, some higher probability for each of these variables. 
So, okay, it's kind of messy. So maybe I'll use another color to, it's better. So, uh, so each of these things will be, oops, uh, each of these variables will be connected to another factor nodes. And uh, the factor function for those factor nodes will be just a um, Gaussian. Uh, for example, like I will have, uh, maybe I call it like f, f1, x1. So we'll be just have a Gaussian distribution. So with, let's say, x1, if some means, uh, mu1, and virus sigma1 goes up. And, um, and so, again, like for Gaussian PP, the objective is, like, uh, given some of the variables, let's say I observe them, maybe I observe, like, oh, okay, this I also x4, if I observe some of those, and then I try to just find the marginal probability of one of the variables, I say x5. I'm actually doing the process, we'll find, find the marginal probability of all of the variables. And, uh, and also because I for Gaussian, um, the mean is equal to the mode. At the same time, actually, you'll find the maximum a posterior probability is just equal to the marginal. Uh, I mean, just equal to the mean of the marginal. Um, and uh, so now let's, before I can continue, I guess I need to uh, introduce a, a different kind of a representation uh, for, um, for the Gaussian distribution. So uh, typically for the Gaussian PDF, as I said, like I, I will have a form like x mu sigma here is saying that it's kind of proportional to exponential minus one half x minus mu transpose sigma inverse x minus mu here. So it's very easy to interpret for this PDF. In this case, mean is, uh, mu is just the mean there for the variables and sigma is just the coherence matrix. And we can have like a different form known as the information form. We have like using uh, h and lambda as the parameter instead. We have a form something like exponential minus one half x um, lambda uh, x, uh, x transpose lambda x uh, plus h transpose x. So I have a form like this. And I can convert one form to another. So, oh, by the way, like, uh, I want to emphasize that, like, when I say proportional to, to this, this, this expo exponent, it's just saying that, like, this is actually equal to some, this exponent multiplied by some, maybe, normalization factor A that only depends on lambda and H, only depends on parameters. So this part does not have A, X inside that. So everything related to X will be just inside this part here. And of course the same also for the original uh, kind of like uh, Gaussian uh, PDF as well. Also like everything relating to X will be inside this one here. And uh, and uh, the rest will be just normalization factor. Now, I, I can easily convert from one form to another. Uh, typically, the information form is more convenient for doing this kind of influence. So, for the, let's start with the original form there. Like, I have an x mu sigma that is proportional to exponential minus one half x minus mu transpose sigma inverse x minus mu. And I can expand that, it's exponential minus one half x transpose sigma inverse x uh, minus one uh, plus one half uh, x transpose sigma inverse mu plus one half mu transpose sigma inverse x minus one half mu expo transpose exponential minus uh, mu sigma inverse mu something like that um so uh yeah what, I'm, what i just did is just i simply expand this i have four times i expand into four times so, 
So f first of all, like um, I can pull this out. So I have exponential something minus something. This is just equal to exponential something multiplied by exponential of this guy, right? So it can be just equal to exponential of this. And of course, like this part does not depend on x. So this will be one of those constant. Constant. I can pull it out. Ignore that completely. So maybe I write proportional instead. Equal to that. Uh, and then I. For these two terms here, know that they are actually identical because I have sigma is the coherence matrix is uh, symmetric. So sigma inverse is symmetric as well. So therefore like I, I I can write like mu transpose sigma inverse actually as sigma inverse transpose mu transpose, right? So A B transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. So uh, therefore, like this is actually equal to mu transpose. That's give me first guy here, and sigma inverse transpose transpose give me sigma inverse here. But as I said, sigma inverse is a um, is symmetric. So if sigma inverse transpose is equal to itself. So therefore, I have this can be actually really written as sigma inverse mu transpose times x. But of course, at x and sigma inverse mu, both of them are confactor. So this. Actually, this is just in the part of column vector, so I can really rewrite this as x transpose uh, sigma inverse mu instead. So uh, basically, what I did is uh, a transpose b is equal to b transpose a because when when a and b are column vectors. So uh, then then immediately I have this is equal to this guy here. So therefore, I can really uh, just merge them together into just uh, sigma inverse mu transpose x just one term here then immediately we see like we can uh, match this guy with the information form here so this will be just h and this will be lambda so therefore like Lambda is equal to sigma inverse and h is equal to uh, sigma inverse mu and then uh, equivalently we can also uh, convert in the other way then uh, sigma will be just equal to lambda inverse then mu will be just equal to uh, uh, lambda times h right oh, sorry sigma sigma times h, I, I just multiply sigma on both hand, both sides here so sigma times h will be equal to lambda inverse times h so I, I, I have uh, some conversion here between these two so maybe I just put it here as a sign node here so like uh, lambda is equal to sigma inverse and uh, h is equal to sigma inverse times mu so and um, no, I don't need this anymore. So I have this, this, these two forms here. The information form and also the, uh, the original like uh, regular form. So now we can really talk about Gaussian BP. So the main thing is that Gaussian BP, the step is really doing uh, marginalization. So let's say if I have like two parameter here. Uh, just x1 and x2 so now this fat nodes in the middle will be uh, just uh, let's say I have just two fat nodes and they they themselves have mean somehow and this they this fat node here is, is like connected by x let's say uh, one one half uh, make sure I have one half here uh, Actually, I, I think I, I probably shouldn't have one half here. Y yes, I think I shouldn't have one half here. Um, so, um, let me double check. Let's see. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have one half there. So um uh, I, co 
uh, actually, why why I shouldn't have one half day is like you can think of like uh, if I want this to be drawn Gaussian, why why I have this kind of form here? Why we have this this kind of form here is like when we want that to be drawn Gaussian, we really have something like have have some something like that. Mm, lambda one two, lambda two one, lambda two two, uh, next one next two, transpose minus one half. Have have this kind of like want want them to be drawn drawn in Gaussian somehow and have something like that. And then if you look at the cost term, like x one and x two, uh, that would be like two cost term here. X one transpose lambda one to x two, and uh, minus one half x two transpose lambda. My lambda the, 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 uh, is okay. Uh, lambda two one x one. And again, like these two terms are identical, and they add together will be the one half will be gone. So therefore, I I don't have one half here. So anyway, uh, that's why I don't want to have one half in that form here. If, if they if somehow coming from some drawn Gaussian. So I I have this here. Okay, this thing coming in here is like x one transpose lambda one two x two. And number one two is basically is the uh it's hard to de I, I don't know what's the name for that because um uh yeah I guess I did this is a uh I, I, yeah I don't exactly know what's to, what's supposed to be a good name for that so anyway this is like I I uh, can't. The factor function between x1 and x2 will be modeled by this guy here. Have a form like this, and then for each of x1, they have uh, um, their own prior probability that have something like exponential minus x1 transpose. I have one half of this guy, um, or maybe I can just use the information form. Let's say I have like n1, uh, not n1, just and inverse x1 taking parameter um let me use h1 h1 and number one and then i let's have like information form maybe i put number one one even x2 h2 lambda do i use number one one or number one in my nose i i want to consist to be consistent Okay, I use number one one. Let's be consistent. I use number number one one and two two. Um, I, I actually this this nice to use this number one and number two two because I um mm -hmm. you can merge them back to uh f to have the okay if you you think of this everything together basically uh number one one number one two number two one number two two will be just the position matrix uh, for x or that this position matrix will be will be just the uh, inverse of this inverse of sigma sigma 2 and sigma 2 this big sigma here so that that's basically a covariance of the Joint distribution x1 x2. So here I didn't specify the mean, but the covariance will be just equal to sigma here. So then, okay, then then okay. I have this is just very simple case two variables just for the sake of illustration. Um, now let's say if I I try to marginalize. Uh, um, how do you say the marginalize x two or marginalize x one? So okay, uh, I want to marginal marginalize out like x one. So get just x two here. So that would be like the to the joint distribution will be these three things where I have uh, exponential the entire distribution p x one. Uh, Minus half h uh, okay. 
and we have x1 transpose lambda 1 1 x1 plus h1 x1 h1 transpose x1 multiplied by exponential mm -hmm. minus x1 transpose lambda 1 2 x2 multiplied by exponential mm -hmm. um, minus 1 half x2 transpose lambda 2 2 x2 plus h2 transpose x2 now I have uh, this is the joint distribution this is proportional the joint is proportional to this then I try to marginalize uh, x1 let's say I, I will marginalize x1 dx1 this one out so what, what, what will I get it's, it looks complicated but the simple way to do that is I, I try to put this back into a um, a kind of like regular form for x1 so I know that like if I put it back in a regular form for x1 if I integrate that this should give me a con this should just integrate to 1 so that will be basically gone so what I, what I mean is like okay let me just write it out so what I mean Basically, what I did again, I said I trying to combine these two guys together. So, uh, and in the original form, I log it in the original form would be like x minus some mu multiplied by just uh, position matrix or the coherence matrix, inverse coherence matrix is uh, x minus another mu here. And uh, so, I Yes, I, I okay, and I have this minus h one here. I take care of this term here. I have h one x basically h one times this times x one and x one times this times h one. This take care of this guy here, and uh, and I also have x one times this guy times this guy. And uh, this guy times this guy times this guy that take care of this term here, okay? Yes. So then, then like we have the problem is I I also introduce some extra extra max term that's basically x two. Uh, have a mixed term for example like it'll be just x2 and x2 here so i have, have extra term will be like minus one half this multiplied by this multiplied by this so this is like something extra i need to cancel that back so i need to have something exponent so one half uh this thing transpose will be just i mean let me write it out so x2 transpose lambda one two transpose will be lambda two one Lambda one one inverse transpose which is lambda one one itself, but it will cancel with this guy and then multiply by lambda one one inverse lambda one two x two. So that's that's a term I, I need to add back, uh, and also I need another term that take care of. Uh, let me use another term. Take care of. Uh, the cross term between like h1 and this guy here and this will be have a sign positive sign right so therefore i need to make it negative it's negative um i i i have two of them so that one half will be just um, gone so it'll be like basically will be just equal to uh, h1 transpose times this lambda one one times lambda one one inverse so lambda one one is gone times lambda one two x two and I still have like something remaining is like this guy here uh,
Let me we copy this guy here. Yes. So then everything is good. It looks like everything is good. Now if I we take integral like over dx1, then this thing will be gone. So this thing is gone. So it's like just uh, this is a Gaussian distribution, right? Um, and it, everything else does not depend on x1, right? Only the past depend on x1. And you pick a, a integral over the variable there, like right? because it's a PDF, supposing you just integrate to one, and you have some normalization factor. We don't care, but the only left behind depends on x2 is just this guys here, this this folks here. So if we integrate over dx1, as we did at the beginning, so we only have this guy left. And then this one, I can be put things together back into information form. So then you see like I have this x2, x2 transpose, so put that back into information form. I have my uh, minus one half. I have this x2 transpose. I have lambda 2, 2, but I have like something additional, this part here, minus lambda 2, 1, lambda 1, 1, inverse, lambda 1, 2, uh, x2, I take care of that, and I also have this term here, I have uh, exponential, uh, originally I have x2 here, x2 minus this lambda h2, h1 transpose, lambda 1, 2 is equal to lambda 1, 2, Transpose lambda one to transpose is lambda two one lambda two one times h one x uh, I have transpose here x one. Now this is the information form and that then we can see that okay for this information form I have this new lambda two two uh basically after the marginalization I have uh, the whole thing, okay, maybe I just write like that, is equal to x2 half h is equal to h2 I, let me just write like that, h1 to 2, it's like a, I have like a propagate this information I, I from node 1 to node 2 that my h should be updated by just adding some h1 1 to 2 that information right here is actually just equal to a minus lambda 2 1 times h1 and also like i have this uh the position matrix change from lambda 2 2 to plus something like let's say call it lambda 1 to 2 so this thing here is just equal to minus lambda two one lambda one one inverse lambda one two. So I guess I, I I'm done with like Gaussian BP. So that that's exactly what uh maybe next time we give an example. Uh so what we this is the main thing here is to summarize is something like I If I have, let's say, variables that um, can be maybe I, I just look at one variable here. Let's say I have one variable here that uh, it is related to some other guys. So let's say I have this variable is a uh, uh, x i is kind of correlated with some other guys that it have its own original prior that like maybe like I have like h i and uh, lambda i or maybe I use consistently use uh, lambda i i and then I it, it kind of like related to some other variables like let's say 
maybe I have like a little x1 and some x2 here now when I have information I like passing from x1 and x2 I pass here to this guy here and let's say this is kind of related by uh, lambda 1i and this related to lambda 2i and then after this BP step after marginalizing that like x xi will just have an update for its like parameters h and lambda as like uh, hi plus lambda 1 i uh, oh, sorry what I'm doing <laughs> plus h1 i plus h2 i h2 to i and this h1 to i and h2 to i is just equal to minus lambda uh, 1 i oh sorry lambda i1 h1 and this is just equal to minus lambda i2 h2 and for lambda here for the update um, update 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 lambda will be just like lambda i i plus uh, lambda 1 to i plus lambda 2 to i and lambda 1 to i will be just minus um, lambda i1 why I say lambda i1 why lambda 1i lambda i1 lambda 1 1 inverse lambda 1i and this lambda 2 to i will be la minus lambda i2 lambda 2 2 inverse lambda 2 so and uh, of course like, once you update this guy let's say you have like, a continuum maybe you have Markov chain or something like that once you update this guy then you can continue to pass along when you, you update this guy then you can pass along uh, you have an updated uh, parameter for xi now you can pass this guy to this guy later on I'm going to pass that so I guess I uh, I, I will give an like, uh, example using uh, uh, Markov chain so uh, next time so uh, hopefully it will, uh, uh, will be clearer once uh, uh, you see an example so but anyway I will just uh, stop here